Brendan Mitchell is a comic book artist and a storyteller, and he's also First Nations. As he shares his story, listen for how he pays attention to the fine differentiation between his culture and white culture, or mainstream culture, and how it has impacted his life. Powerful story, wonderful sharing, hope you enjoy. So welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Thanks for taking time. We're just before Christmas, so you've been out running like the rest of us. <laughs> like crazy. Chicken with my head cut off. <laughs> Loving it. <laughs> All good. All good. The, um, much of your background has to do with storytelling. Yes. And um, to fill in our audience right away, like who is Brandon Mitchell? Um, your graphic novelist, your graphic artist, comic book writer, illustrator. Teach us. Jack, jack of all trades, master of a few. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, I'm, I went to, uh, I, I, I'm from Listigooch. Uh, I'm Big Ma. Uh, I graduated high school in 1998. And right from there, um, I went to uh, study animation in uh, Miramichi. Oh, okay. At a community college over there. Yeah, it was really? a great, excellent program. So, so whereabouts is your home community located in relation to Miramichi? How far away are you? Less than two hours. Okay. So the great thing about that was, uh, I, uh, the great thing about it was we weren't far from home. Yeah. So if I wanted to go home for the, if I missed home, yeah. it was only a two-hour drive. Yeah. That was the great thing about it. Uh, I don't know if my parents enjoyed it as much as I did, but uh, <laughs> never had dirty laundry. <laughs> yeah. 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 This is cool. Um, but yeah, no, I, I was there for uh, two and a half years. Uh, the great thing about the, the college or even the, the teachers there uh, was uh, drawing is one part talent, but mostly skill. And like any skill, if you practice, you'll get better at it. So I was like... Uh, uh, Thanks for sharing that because I really thought it was just uh, talent based. Uh, so uh, they they basically rebuilt me, saying like you've got some talent, but but you don't have the skills. <laughs> let's let's build those skills up. Yeah. And at the end, I had a really great portfolio. And um, actually, before I uh, graduated, I graduated in December of two thousand. And uh, before graduation, I was offered the teaching position back home. So I went to go, I was offered to teach to grade one to grade eight, teach them um, art and computers um, at the Alexei Gipu school. And I was just like, yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. It was a great opportunity for me to give back mm -hmm. and to share what, uh, to share what I, I learned. So I had a lot of fun doing that. So what was the Miramichi school experience like? It was the first time away from home, I assume. I'm not too far away to go back and get the laundry done, grab some food, and then scoop back. But did you have a mentor that saw you through some of the key transitions or a special teacher? Or was there a cast of characters that you bonded oh, with? Oh, jeez. Miramichi is a unique place. It's, it's got its own Miramichi is vibe. A, Miramichi is a unique place, but it was also it was one of those weird times to be there, too. Okay. Because we were there during the... Uh, so it was 98, 99. Yeah, the, the, the 99 was a weird year because uh, I built a really good camaraderie with uh, a lot of the students there and the teachers. Um, but one thing that stood out was because it was during uh, the Marshall decision just came out and there was already standoff uh, the previous year over lobster. Um, and I didn't know how passionate people were about, non-Indigenous people were about lobster fishing and that was one of my first forays into like okay you're here you stay on your side and i'll stay on my side so it was it was really back then uh, i saw the divide and i was like oh okay it was one of those uh and it was even in the classroom too like like the friends i thought i were friends were when this came up they're just like and a lot of it was they didn't really know their history or our history so it wasn't like i held it uh yeah held on to it and i was just like you guys just don't know and <laughs> i'm not i'm not here to teach i'm here to learn yeah so um but uh, and, and but it was just a sign of those times too right and i was just like i'm just i'm here to focus on this stuff yeah and this triggers you and it triggers me 
we're not going to we're not going to see through this. I'm just not going to bring it up. Yeah. And we just moved on from it. But uh, but that was it was really it was a great experience. But it was a like part parts of it were weird too. Yeah, it's, that's a tough lesson when politics in a bigger sphere come to find themselves in a microcosm like a community college and your first experience with. Yeah, and so, the and the other part too is that in my in my class there was like I think there was there was about thirty of us and I was the only uh, native student there. So it was really one of those things where it's like, uh, the thing I was wrestling with too, is like, am I an artist or am I a native artist? Right. And that was one of the things that, uh, I, I had to really th- not think about, but I wrestled with because the perception of what, um, because I grew up on, uh, watching Peter Pan movies or what I saw in pop culture and how we were portrayed. I was like, that's not. That's not me. <laughs> uh, that's Hollywood. That's Hollywood. That, that's and then, the, and, then yeah. and then the other part too is it's like uh, uh, you see those uh, commemorative plates and I'm like that's not us like yeah. the, the romanticized version and um but it was a means in the way I look at it it was a means for artists to pay the bills yep. like yep. You're, at least you're creating and at least you're doing something but yep. I knew when I was going into the school even though I wasn't saying it out loud I knew what I wanted to avoid doing. And when I went to the, when I went back home to teach, I was showing the kids the skills that I learned and demystifying. And that was, for me, it's about, it's about uh, demystifying. Like, this is not some type of secret club that you guys can't get access to. You guys can. You guys will. I'm going to show you. If this is what you want to do, this is what you got to do to get in. Yep. And you don't have to compromise yep. who you are. What you said is so straightforward and so powerful right? because it's easily pictured, you know, a 19 or 18 year old in Miramichi and, and this other issue comes floating in from the side, which begs basic questions for you. Am I an artist or a First Nations artist or a native artist? Have you settled that one? Do you, has it blended together yet or will that just be the way it is and you can dance both worlds? I don't. I want to say yes and I think yes. I'm believing more that I'm an artist and it just so happens that I'm um, a, a native artist but the thing is is uh, a lot of the, the the work or say I want to try and get uh, it's almost pigeonholed yeah. or in a niche market now I'm kind of like but I can do these really great I have these really great ideas and they're like uh, no you only do native stuff I'm like but I, no, no <laughs> alright then but my soul says I want yeah, to do this but way. I want to do this for a little bit but I reconcile that because then I see like uh, there's a lot of things now about appropriation, and I didn't <clears throat> back then. I didn't. I took for granted our stories. I took it for granted my upbringing, and I was like, oh, this is like a common experience or whatever, and no one's going to want to hear about that or know about that. And as I went along, one of the stories I wrote uh, was actually easier to write about because I was writing on an experience I had, and it was easier to tell a narrative that I was trying to tell because yep. when I was, when I was putting the, my little Easter eggs in there, I was like, Oh yeah, this is easy to write about because I went through this and, and just the story naturally flowed. And I was like, oh, okay. And when I tell them, when I tell people about that, Oh yeah, this was based off of uh, a canoe trip I was on. They're like, Oh, Oh, okay, cool. Like interesting. Eh? Do you want to uh, share with us? You, Cause you, Oh uh, yeah. So yeah, I brought some books. With, so the, the one uh, I was talking about was uh river run. Okay. So that's the one I... Uh, I'll hold it up. Uh, that's a book I wrote, and it was based on traditional tobacco use and smoking cessation, or whatever, yep. anti-smoking. And um, I was given the parameters. This is what it has to touch upon. As long as you hit these marks, you can write about whatever you want to write about. Um, and then I was like... Uh, I gave a couple of pitches and right away I was like, I tossed, before I submitted my pitch, I tossed it because I was like, nope, there's another story I want to try and write about. And this was, a, it, and I was like, well, why don't I do something about one of my experiences? Uh, not that I was an avid smoker, but what if I write about the canoe trip I was on and how those three days I grew in those three days. Yeah. And so I spliced that into a larger the, the story with the parameters I was given so yeah I was able to sneak in and it was a lot easier to write something that I had experience with yeah. than just trying to grab stuff from the air and 
Yeah, it's one of those exercises about write about what you know. Yeah. Th those sorts of, but at the same time, people, uh, other authors have been on and say, well, but who am I to talk about that? You know, you, that question is significance or is my story relevant to other people? Um, Tied to this. So this one, River Run, is based on personal experience. How how did you come to even build it or create it? Was there someone that said, Brandon, can you start doing a series of comic books for us on on your adventures? So you know, okay, yeah, so I kind of jumped. Uh, I, I it's okay. And how jumped, old? I jumped about five five years to get to that point. Okay, maybe longer. Um, so going back to uh, teaching at the school, uh, I I was uh, I don't know if I had any right to be there. Because I was like, I don't know how to teach guys. I, um, and they're just like, I already had a reputation of being good with kids and I knew how to draw. And, and they're just like, you're, you're going to, you're going to do well in this. You're going to do well in this. I'm like, okay. If you guys think so. Yeah. And, uh, but sure enough though, I, like I, I walked in there without any, um, it was like, for me, it's just, it, it's about giving respect and receiving respect. And that's how I was able to, uh, for lack of a better word, survive the the classroom. Because even then, too, like I had a wide range of uh, spectrum of kids I was uh, teaching, and I had to be quick on my feet and adapt to learning styles. Things that I took, like I was just like, okay, this kid's acting this way, this kid's acting this way. This is my lesson. How do I accommodate just to kind of get the the point across what I want to what I want to try and do, and uh, these, these like all these things were just kind of natural. I just I didn't really get to the point where I wasn't even thinking about it. I was just doing it. And at the end, I had these kids like drawing uh, their own characters, their own little comic strips. Um, but even in those first exercises, I wasn't showing them any uh, native stories, or I wasn't showing them any of our stories. It was just like here are the skills. And as I got more comfortable and figuring figuring out what I was doing, I was like, uh, we're not like, how come I'm I'm not showing our stories or promoting our stories because I, there was one during one class I mentioned uh goose cap and just this like look in her face like who's that and I was like oh no okay all right all right all right so we're gonna do this quick little exercise yeah. I'm gonna do my homework yeah. for you guys and we're gonna do something fun in the next class uh so I uh, was brushing up on the stories I heard uh I remember hearing growing up and I knew that we had some books on some of the legends. I read them, digested them, uh, and then brought them back to the class. And, and when I was reading them, though, I was just like, "There's got to like, there's got to be a way to put my not so much my spin, but my bend or what I've learned in context, yeah, and share it with them." So I uh, uh, one of the exercises I remember in college was taking. Um, a, a story concept like if you have point a point b you're given those two points you have to make up point c like make make your own conclusion so i did that i told them the story and i said okay i stopped and i said well how do you guys want to end it and they got their mind spinning and they're just like uh this is what i'm going to do this is what i'm going to do and so it was really great to see like get that creativity sparked yeah. um but they flipped it on me afterwards because they're like well what would you do <laughs> And I, and I was stuck. I was like, "Oh, geez, I don't, I don't know what I would do. Let me sit on it. I'll get back to you guys." Yeah. And uh, so uh, I went back home, and I was and it really it didn't. It didn't uh, I, I liked the fact that I was challenged. I was like, "What would I do? What would I do?" And uh, and that's where uh, Sacred Circles came along. Uh, it's a, it was with their. Uh, it was really with their uh, just kind of probing me and asking me questions and challenging me yeah. um, off of something, uh, an exercise I was giving them yeah. and acknowledging that and respecting that too. Cause I wasn't just, I was like, uh, uh, I, uh, I went back to class and I was like, okay guys, here's the, here's what I would do. And here's my concept. And here's what I'm like. I, I just took that exercise and I blew it up and the kids were all excited and like, you should make a comic book. <laughs> and I was like, Maybe I should. Okay, <laughs> sit on. Okay, hold on, guys. Hold on. I'll I'll, I'll be back with this. Um, and uh, so I I was like, uh, and this was back in two thousand one, two thousand two. Nobody was doing native comic books, and if they were, 
uh, like if uh, the the small indie books weren't really getting a lot of attention, uh, and the and, what, and going back to what I grew up with, right? Like the only native superheroes were the ones in uh, in Marvel or DC. They were either background characters, sidekicks. Uh, they usually didn't last until the first, like past the first issue. Um, uh, not well, a little bit patronizing, but they're just like a, I didn't stereotype uh, stereotypical, and I was just kind of like I looked at them. and I was like, well, it's all I got. I don't have Wolverine, but I'll take Warpath. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, and I and I remember lat- attaching myself to them, but at the same time, I was like, "Oh, he died." Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you do a thumbnail on Sacred Circles storyline? Uh so story. Yeah. So, like I said, I was challenged with the by the by my students. They 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 proposed that I like, what would you do? And I remember when I was going through the uh, the legends that I was reading them, I was reading about the story about the Genu, and the Genu in our culture is a a, a cannibal. And it's a cannibal giant. I was like, wow, this is a great, just the concept alone. I was like, this writes itself. And, um, uh, but then I was reading the meaning behind the story. I was, uh, the light after the legend, I was reading the story about it. And the genu was someone who has lost their way. And I was like, I can, I can really work with this. Then it's, it's a character that lost his way. It used to be part of a community and they're, they're lost. Uh, so that's where the concept of the, the sacred circles came. I was like, I'm going to write about, somebody who is lost and who is tortured by that loss and so the story takes place like the the epilogue starts back in the 1700s um and i was doing a lot of parallels of just trying to uh, subconsciously i was just like uh, okay this is how i'm going to write it and i'm going to write about uh, uh, uh trying to rebuild a relationship but some people don't want to see that built they just want it the way it used to be and for me i was like well we're all here, like we, we we're all here. I mean, we gotta build this relationship, and we need to make it work. It's the story that I was trying to tell, but there's this one character who was like, "No, I want, I want it all gone." And so, in his quest, he was cursed and he was banished. And then we fast forward to present day, and they, um, these group of kids, unknowingly unlock this creature that was imprisoned. And since he was in prison for so long, his anger and his hatred just grew. And then when he was free, he wanted to finish what he started. And so the story is about them trying to stop that. And uh, <laughs> and I have the the ending on my hard drive. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a nice dot dot dot. Yeah, to, to be continued. <laughs> yeah, to be continued. You know? yeah. But but the but the other hanger. part, yeah, the cliffhanger. But I mean, like, uh, I took a lot of chances because I was just like, um, trying to find funding for this. No one was doing. There was no precedent for what was going on at the time, hmm. and I was like, I've got nothing to lose. I'm gonna just see how far I can take this. Hmm. And it was one of those things. Like every step of the way, I was like, okay, well, no one said no yet. So I gotta keep <laughs> keep yes. on going, keep on going. Yep. And. Uh, and yeah, it was it was just a lot of uh, it was a lot of fun and it was a really great learning experience. Um, I took it as far as I could, uh, and uh, it was just like it was a combination of things, like just the the uh, starting a business, raising a family, trying to like it was just one of those things like something had to give, and I was like, no, I got to focus on my I got to focus on the family, and yeah. I said I'm going to just put this aside for a little bit because I can't do it all right now yep and i'm going to come back to when time's right um but in between that time uh that's where i got i uh, was put or, um, i got uh, word spread fast of what i was doing yes and the the funny part was i remember uh and i was writing the script for the third issue you got a phone call and it was uh adam beach who called me the and uh, i was like uh he's like hey uh it's Adam. I'm like, yeah, Adam. Who? Like, Adam Beach. Get the hell out of here. No way. Okay, like, te- teach me who. Oh, Adam, Adam Beach. Uh, he's Sorry. an actor. Okay. Yeah, he was on. Uh, oh, he was briefly on Suicide Squad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was on uh, uh, Wind Talkers. Okay. Yeah, and uh, Flags of Our Fathers. 
Okay. Yeah. So. So it blew you away a little bit. Well, yeah, it blew me away. I I, I knew his previous work at the time, and uh, yeah, when he called me up, he was just like, "Yeah, I got this idea, and I've seen your book, and it's really great." And and I was like, uh, "You're you're pulling my leg." No, it's. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Be good. Have fun. Love each other. The Dennis Report is an independent media production. To support the program, go to DennisAtchison.com and click Become My Patron on Patreon. Patreon.